in the top stories, an economist says the Barbados dollar is safe, a vendor is stabbed in the city, and nearly 100 people march in protest of government's policies. Welcome to Nation News for Friday, June 20th, 2014. I'm Natasha Beckles. The Barbados dollar is not in danger of being devalued. That's the view of seasoned economist Dr. Clyde Maskell, who wants Barbadians to stay away from such talk since Barbados has adequate foreign reserves. The former Minister of State in the Ministry of Finance and current Barbados Labour Party spokesman on economic matters was responding to a question posed during a First Citizens Investment Services seminar last night. He said, well, in the current climate, some people tended to get very worked up Devaluation is a good way off in Barbados. A vendor was stabbed multiple times just after 1 p.m. this afternoon in Jubilee Gardens, the city. The victim, popularly known as Bushman, received several stab wounds to his back, neck and leg. He was rushed to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital by ambulance. Police are investigating. Meanwhile, police have made a breakthrough in the killing of Aaron Boyce, whose body was discovered in a cemetery at Pleasant Hall, St. Peter, last month. Police Public Relations Officer Inspector David Welch said three men were assisting with investigations into the death of the Pie Corner St. Lucie man. Meanwhile, Acting Assistant Commissioner of Police Erwin Boyce described the killing as horrific and said more information would be revealed by the beginning of next week. Around 100 people made their frustrations with government known as they marched through the city today. Led by political activist Robert Clark, the group traveled through Bridgetown. We want change! We want change! When do we want change? When do we want change? When do we want change? Clark said the march was a way to allow the public to get their voices heard, as there were too many instances of government mismanagement and non caring attitudes. The protesters held placards denouncing VAT and the cost of living, as well as calling for integrity in government. They marched from Independence Square, traveling along Wharf Road, Hink Street, Jubilee Gardens, Chapel Street, Broad Street, and back. The Royal Barbados Police Force has assured the Ivy St. Michael community that it is behind them. Senior officials, including assistant commissioners, walked through the troubled district last night amidst intermittent drizzles to chat with as many residents as they could. The initiative was born out of a spate of violence that has been affecting the community. When there are incidents of crime or the fear of crime, that we reassure our citizens that we are here for them. Our, our job is to protect our people, to make them feel safe. And surely uh, the discussion with some of the residents suggests that um, we are welcome and they welcome what we, we had to say to them and we are hoping that they would assist us to assist them. A UNICEF official says sexual abuse of children in Barbados is most often carried out by men who are in relationships with minors. According to child protection specialist Heather Stewart, family friends and neighbors are also high on the list. Speaking based on Child Care Board statistics from 2008 to 2013, she said a small number of mothers were also perpetrators. Ms. Stewart made the comments today as the Student Sexual Abuse Symposium continued at Hilton Barbados. Cropover will kick into high gear next Saturday with the staging of the Republic Bank City Fest and ceremonial delivery of the last canes. The heart of Bridgetown will be closed to vehicular traffic from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m to accommodate the spectacle which is expected to attract several locals and visitors. Speaking during a press conference earlier today, Acting Assistant Commissioner of Police Erwin Boyce gave the assurance that commercial operations and vending would continue as usual. Selected wayside vendors will be placed near the inner basin of the carinage, while the event centerpiece will take the form of a parade from the General Post Office in Cheapside to Heroes Square. CEO Williams Construction Limited and the Barbados National Standards Institution signed an agreement today which will see them working together to upgrade CEO Williams road traffic safety practices. Work is expected to commence on June 23rd and will last between 12 and 18 months. 
During that time, the BNSI will be working closely with C.O. Williams to assist them in implementing a road safety management system. In sports, from the early stages of the Pine Hill Dairy Primary School's netball competition, it seemed that 10-time champion St. Giles and last year's losing finalist Blackman and Gollop would reach the finals. And St. Giles produced a comprehensive 19-8 victory over Bay Primary in the first semi-final of the competition today. However, Blackman and Gollop created panic on the court and in the stands among a large supporting crowd before edging home 12-11 against Luther Thorn Memorial. St. Giles and Blackman Gollop will face off in the finals next Thursday at the Netball Stadium. Queen's College and Christchurch Foundation are the new champions of the under-15 and under-13 Barbados Secondary Schools Netball League. Yesterday evening, QC captured the under-15 crown with a 22-14 victory over Courage and Parry, with captain and eventual MVP Nayara Ford leading the way. Foundation's captain Brianna Holder was also impressive on the eve of her 13th birthday as she led Foundation to a 16-8 win over the former Queen's Springer Memorial. Holder also claimed the MVP title. In motorsport, Roger His Hotness Mears and Stuart Williams have been named in Team Barbados for next month's international race meet at the redeveloped Bushy Park. They will be joined by Barry Mears and the father and son combination of Doug and Mark Maloney for the Digicel Williams International Race Meet and the opening rounds of the Seaboard Marine Caribbean Motor Racing Championship. The racing on the first weekend of July has attracted a record 26 competitors from the Caribbean in two- and four-wheel drive cars along with super bikes from Guyana, Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago. And finally, a handsome mugshot of a Northern California man has gone viral on social media, attracting more than 33,000 likes and drawing comments praising his high cheekbones, chiseled face and striking blue eyes. The photo won the hearts of thousands of women, but behind those ice blue eyes is a much less attractive story of gang tattoos, grand theft and forgery. And if his rap sheet is not enough, it's emerged that he's married and he's a father. And that's where I say goodbye for June 20th, 2014. Do enjoy your weekend and remember, you can get your news on our website nationnews.com as well as our YouTube channel, Facebook and Twitter.